in more, I would say, even aggressive ways, because these things are things that half the population, and, and when I was speaking to the legislature a few months ago, I said, any of these things, they're not women's issues or problems. You know, Hillary Clinton made that statement many years ago. You know, women's issues are human issues. You know, they really are. They're family issues. They're, they're issues, I mean, they impact everyone directly or indirectly, right? So in terms of the status of women, I'm going to give you a broader context here. Just give you a quick introduction here. I really started paying attention to rankings in 2013 when I started getting lots of media in terms of why Utah, here, ranked last, the worst state for women. Then in 2014, the 10 worst states for women in this source, and Utah was the worst. This one came out in 2014. Five places women shouldn't spend their travel dollars in the entire world. El Salvador, Saudi Arabia, places that kill women, and five was Utah. It's not even a country. The rest of them are countries. So, and then while I went on, did you see the media in August, September? Again, every year, Utah it has ranked uh, for the last four years, but then before that as well. I think we were worst, second to the worst, the, one of those years. But um, um, and this one is specifically one is equality. So I'm looking at your faces, and you're all getting like, what? This is so depressing. Madison is depressing sometimes. So, I, um, so a couple years ago, uh, Utah is the second most sexist state, and Utah is, or women's internalized sexism is even more, we're not going to let men off the hook, but just internal sexism of women themselves. Um, um, and sexism is really in this source, like men should do this, women should do this. Men should be in politics. Men should be quiet. Men should be public. When you know that that kind of stuff. That's what it is. So, are you depressed now? You're going to get more depressed in just a minute when I give you an update. But the thing is, I absolutely believe that we cannot change until we know what's happening. And I am passionate about that. I am passionate about giving women and men and Utahns more generally the information we need to then lean in, step forward, use our voices, um, and do things that absolutely need to occur so that we lift and provide, provide opportunities for all Utahs, not just white people, <laughs> not just men, um, but everyone. And so, um, I, and, and I'm one of the speakers that gets cherry eyed the most. And I just don't get over that. I'm a woman. And I, by the way, I am a woman and I love living in Utah. Are there issues that need to be fixed in Utah related to gender? Yes. But I can still love Utah. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, you know, I'm not even going to even talk about this one. But you know the business case. You know why. I mean, you've heard it. You know that it does make a difference in all settings when men and women work together. And, and it, it is clear, so much research. I love this, this one study. Um, if you've heard me speak recently, you may have heard this, but um, I love the word wicked problem. I've been doing work in, in um, the UK for many years. And for 10, 15 years, they've been using that. We don't really use that in the United States. And what it means is wicked is not like unrighteous. <laughs> wicked is a complex, super complex problem. The research says it, it is a simple problem. You really don't need diversity. But it complex problems, you do. So I'm going to call them wicked problems. Really complex, right? Um, and and question, I mean, do we have complex problems? Do we have wicked, I even like to say that word, <laughs> wicked problems. Do, you, do we have wicked problems in this world? Like right now, like is the pandemic not the most wicked? And, and gender and race, um, we have wicked problems, uh, gender and race. So this, um, this, the last uh, slide, I just want to tell you about a study that was published last year. 
and it was in England, a military study, and the researchers actually put together many, many groups of five people. Two thirds of them had five men, no women. A third of them had four men, one woman. And they gave them a wicked problem. And a really deep, complex problem. And in every case except for one, and in that one case, they found that the men just shut the woman out. But in every other case where there was a woman on the team, they outperformed any other team. And usually it takes at least 30%, and that was a little, you know, less than that. But it, it really matters. And so, okay, the Utah culture. <laughs> um, we do have some unique issues here in Utah. I, I love the Utah culture in a lot of ways, but there are some, and everybody calls it the Utah culture, right? It's, it's fun. Um, but uh, I'll just tell you one quick thing on this slide, and then I want to just give you a quick view of all the, where we're at at different topics in the state. So the one thing on this side, I wanted to tell you about a study of the wage gap. Is that a problem in the state of Utah? Okay, it is a problem. So this, this research that was just published actually this year, very good research, looked at, that they did two studies. One was they looked at every state in the United States and compared them on how religious the state was. All right, and then another one, they looked at every country in the world and compared them on how religious. And in every single case, in both studies, the more religious societies, what do you think on the wage gap? Okay, <laughs> the worst wage gap. And what they said, there were three core reasons for that. One, more religious societies have higher reproductive rates. Makes sense. There's a motherhood penalty. We know the research on that. Second, more religious societies, and we need to change this in Utah, have less women in political power. Okay, so less women in the state legislature and Congress and all of this. So more religious societies just have less women. The third, anybody want to guess? More religious societies have more sexual objectification. And that's measured by pornography rights. And in Utah, you know, we have eye cosmetic surgery that's linked to body image issues too, which is connected as well. Um, and actually there's, I won't tell you all the studies, but there's um, interestingly a lot of research on conservative leaders, male leaders, and the link to more increased bias in terms of gender bias and gender discrimination lawsuits. So there's some interesting things. I love being in a conservative society in many ways, and I'm to be a very active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and she's had a church built by gave her, came out this book. Yeah. <laughs> a, few, a few shortly God can see for you as a leadership book for a young woman and young single adults in, in, in my church. Uh, but uh, I say that because, you know, there's a history of things that just really have built up to this, but I will tell you that in my religious view, in my relationship with God. I believe God loves women just as much as men, and in today's world, God needs our voices just as much as men, if not more, if not more. Okay, this is not, I won't bear my testimony anymore. I'm so gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> all right, so what I want to do now is just really touch on a few quick, um, I have so much research, but I'm just going to give you a taste and don't get too depressed. Okay, here we go. So, I'm going to college completion. We have gotten better in terms of the bachelor's degree level. We're about, even with men, we're still behind the nation because many states have way more women graduating from college than men. We don't necessarily want a ton more women graduating than men. We want more women and more men, right? And so we're making progress there. We are significantly deemed on the wall at the because we have significantly less women in graduate degrees compared to the nation. And, um, and by the way, on December 2nd, we're releasing uh, Scott Anderson from Zion's Bank commissioned uh, my team to do a report to analyze all the details of the wallet Hub report 
going back to the original and figuring out how do we do better on that and what do we need to change. All right, politics, guess what? Where do we stand when we compare to the nation? Let's do thumbs. Yeah. Not, yeah, please talk. Okay. <laughs> we made a little progress. More, more, and we don't have the latest data, but man, I'm here and we're, I, I've got to get a, a research team going on this. But I'm sure here and there's more women mayors after. Has it been two weeks now? So nonprofits, we're, we're still a little bit on women's CEOs and, and executives. A little below the nation, but we do pretty well on that in the state of Utah. K through 12 leadership, we have, of course, more principles, more things, but compared to the nation, we're still a little slightly below, but do pretty well in that. Higher education leadership, uh, we have some presidents of, of colleges and universities still when we look down into the, the um, uh, dean level and so forth, it's very, it's very masculine still. Business, what do you think? Ah, no, we're really sucky. I mean, why do I say that? We really, we, between our first and second report, we went backwards. Like less women and executive teams, less women. I think it's because our tech companies come and they bring men, right? A lot of them. Um, confidence, entrepreneurship, some say we're doing pretty good, some say we're not doing so good on when it's starting businesses. There's a lot of details with that. State boards and commissions, we did from our first to second report see a progress, about 4%. Um, although uh, Nubia and I, in our work with the state, the state is absolutely, the governor and lieutenant governor are committed to changing those state boards and commissions. Um, the system is not quite ready. I'm not going to put out a call until it's ready. But I'll tell you, that women in this room, let's get you on some of these state boards and commissions. Uh, male allyship, we don't really compare that to the nation. STEM education, we have significantly less women in Utah in non-traditional areas. You know, the nation is not that, that great. <laughs> Those areas have better than Utah, though. But we, we are moving in some areas more than others. These are just some other studies we've done. We did a whole slew of government studies, but we don't have comparison data. Other states have never done this. We're getting down into the details. We think we're doing okay at the state and county, probably a little bit below national average, but surprisingly better than, than I was thinking. Quite low in municipality leadership for women. Um, and these are a few other uh, briefs that we've written. We just did anybody see our brief last week? We are launching a whole set of briefs we collected last summer, like a year and a half or a year or so ago. Uh, comments from about a thousand women on sexist comments that had been made and behaviors and how to respond. How did they respond? So we launched the first one. We have four more to come with good, good, uh, good responses uh, or bad responses. How do women respond? You know, they're just shocked. Uh, so that's an interesting study. Uh, my, okay, I'm just going to give you one that drives me crazy. I mean, one that's just shocking. Okay, so you, you want this here? Okay. I'm, I'm all done. <laughs> so here, here it is. A woman from the city council um, was going to a dinner. And she went to sit at the table, and there was a, another man on the city council sitting right here, and his wife was over here. And then there was an empty seat, and the woman came and sat here. And the man, his wife is here, empty seat. He patted the chair and said, move your sexy body over here. <laughs> that was in Utah. And his wife's sitting right there. Oh, we have so many stories. So many stories. Okay, in terms of our snapshots, our briefs are original data. Our snapshots are, we bring data together a lot on college completion. Voting, interesting data, interesting. 2000 or 1992, we were first in the nation for women voting. By about 2000, we were the worst in the nation for voting. We started climbing in 2000 and, and um, well, I'm getting my dates wrong. In about 2000 and, um, let me think, 2012, we were actually up to about 34th, 35th, and then actually.
actually, a few years later, we, um, we, I think it was 2016, we ended up being, no, 2018, we got to 11th again. We were just barely scraping up. And then we just put out a brief that in 2020, I was hoping it was higher, but we're down to, we went from 11th to 34th, so. But civic engagement, we are good. I know I'm seeing, seeing, what are you saying?